First tonight, in a letter to the governor, South Mississippi lawmakers are urging action on the COVID-19 front. Those co-senators asking the governor to close all of our beaches to non-residents and offer a report on how Mississippi hospitals are equipped to handle the growing spread of the virus. Our Tristan Rupert joins us now live tonight to explain. Tristan. Allison, six members of the coast legislative delegation say it's time to close Mississippi beaches to non residents. They say coast community members are rightly or are right to be concerned after a growing number of coronavirus cases are diagnosed here in the states and of course uh, right to be concerned over the close proximity uh, of the coast to one of the epicenters of the breakout. Louisiana. Governor Tate Reeves received a letter earlier today asking that the beaches be closed to outsiders at least until April 30th and to have city and county officials patrol public places like restaurants and grocery stores to ensure people are abiding by social distancing ordinances. The letter also requests the governor, MEMA, and the health department issue a report on COVID-19 readiness. They asked the report include information on efforts to procure personal protective equipment for healthcare professionals, efforts to secure ventilators and other equipment for treatment, and efforts to designate hospitals for treatment as coronavirus cases increase. Now, you can read the entire letter on WLOX.com. Reporting in Ocean Springs, Tristan Rupert, WLOX News Now. In the governor's press conference today, he was asked if he would consider closing the beaches. He told the media local jurisdictions have closed beaches, but that's not the case. The three coastal counties are limiting the size of crowds, but have not ordered any areas to officially close. The governor did say his administration is able and ready to issue an order if asked. Well, the beach is closed. Those are the words that crews on Tybee Island painted on plywood and nailed to beach access points. This morning, they were officially closed to the public until further notice. A very strong move, but one that Tybee Island says they feel was necessary to ensure the safety of everyone. WTOC Sam Bauman has more on that decision and what it means for you. Just over a month ago, Tybee Island was busy preparing for spring break and the summer season. A plan that included a lot of things, but one thing no one could have planned for. How to deal with a pandemic worldwide health issue. That was not on our list. Tybee Island's mayor, Shirley Sessions, addressing the emergency directive this morning. A directive that means closing the beaches. A decision that wasn't easy for the mayor. I walk the beach every day. I won't be doing that during this period. But one she felt she had to make is in the best interest of our community and those beyond because it it's impacts all of us. Typically, the spring break crowd is a good thing for business on the island, but in light of the spread of COVID-19, that big crowd becomes a big problem. There are high numbers uh, of uh, spring breakers, underage drinking, no social uh, distancing at all. Also included in the declaration, a ban on public consumption of alcoholic beverages, and a closure of city parking lots. And if you're thinking about ignoring that, up to $1,000 is a fine that can be enforced. Hopefully encouraging everyone to play it safe. As for how long the directive will stay in effect. Daily, we're looking and reviewing what, how is this working? If it's not working, what do we need to do? If it is working, can we relax some of the restrictions? In other words, the more you do your part, the more likely it is that things can get back to normal. Hopefully it won't be long and we'll all be back saying see you at the beach. Sam Bauman, WTOC News. Give you a live look checking out our Tybee Island sky cam. You can see the beaches are empty. While well, the city also discussed a potential closure, potential of US 80. Mayor Session says it is a possibility if things get worse, but at this time, it is not likely. Some Georgia beaches will reopen this weekend following an executive order issued by Governor Brian Kemp that overrode local shelter-in-place mandates from a number of cities. A spokesperson for Kemp told the Atlanta Journal-Constitution that the order would allow popular beaches in Georgia, such as Tybee Island, to reopen after they had closed because of local measures aimed at limiting the community spread of COVID-19. The order went into effect Friday night at 6 p.m. It allows for people to exercise outside as long as they maintain at least six feet of distance from other individuals. Following confusion over Governor Kemp's shelter-in-place order, beaches on Tybee Island are officially reopened. Our Stephen Moody joins us now live from Tybee. And Stephen, what's the reaction tonight from city leaders? 
Well, Shannon, Mayor Shirley Sessions is not happy with the beaches reopening here on Tybee Island, and she tells me that she's disappointed by the governor's decision. Beaches on Tybee Island have been closed for weeks after an order by Mayor Shirley Sessions. However, the governor's order overrides that. We are very, very disappointed as a, a community. Mayor Sessions says the city doesn't have the resources to ensure the safety of residents who decide to visit the beach. Tybee does not have the resources to enforce a six foot uh, separation uh, and or the less than 10 people in gatherings. We experienced that in March. That's why we closed the beach. We knew that we were not prepared to handle thousands of people. According to the Department of Natural Resources, the governor's order overrides any local ordinances, so there's nothing the city can do to keep the beaches closed. Mayor Sessions says the city is already at a disadvantage. Sessions sent a letter to the governor's office asking him to reconsider this order. We have five police officers who are self-quarantined. Uh, one police officer is being tested, and we feel like we're putting our, not only our community and the public at risk, but also potentially our staff. And now she's pleading with everyone else, please stay off of the beach. Don't come out to Tybee when it's, we you know they're, if they're concerned about, concerned about their health and their family's health, and the health of the community. We'd love to have them out here when all is safe. We're encouraging our residents to stay home and uh, we just hope that other people will take responsibility and be accountable for their, for their actions. Now, there have been a lot of questions about the status of the beach. I can tell you that after that order went in place at 6 p.m., people were lined up here at the pier trying to get access to the beach. But as you can see behind me, that signage is still there. Now, I spoke to the mayor about that. She says that due to the timing of all of this, they didn't have the staffing available to take the signage down at these access points. Reporting live tonight here on Sabi Island, I'm Stephen Moody for WJCL 22 News. Stephen, thank you. Now, while beaches are open, chairs, tents, and umbrellas on the beach are banned. Also, anyone at the beach must adhere to the CDC social distancing guidelines. Northwest Florida now, where despite more than 100 COVID-19 cases, Escambia County tonight considered reopening public beaches before ultimately deciding to keep them closed. News 5's Cody Long joins us live tonight at Pensacola Beach with more on the decision and how long it will last. Cody? Yeah, Peter, right now, commissioners say they're taking it day by day as they continue to look at the data coming in from the health department. But for now, this yellow tape here will stay up. No one is allowed on public beaches here in Escambia County. We're in uncharted territory right now. Craig and Michelle Robinson love the beach and looking out at the emerald water. But they agree with the commission that the public beaches should stay closed. Well, I think you should keep it closed right now until there's more information out there. The commission voted four to one to keep them closed. Commissioner Doug Underhill is the only one who voted against the motion. I do believe that it's time to reopen the beaches to locals. Uh, the governor's already made sure that the welcome mat for Florida has been rolled up. Uh, if you're not already here, don't come. There's no place for you to stay. He says the sheriff's office can police the social distancing and he says it's important to get people along the beaches back to work. We have the ability to put simple measures in place that allow citizens to use the beaches which belong to them. Simple measures in place that allow some of our Scambia citizens to go back to work. I hate it for all these businesses out here too because they're really suffering. The commissioners say they may discuss this again at the meeting on April 14th. If they do decide to reopen beaches before then, they say they'll have an emergency meeting where they will vote again. Reporting live from Pensacola Beach, I'm Cody Long, WKRG News 5. Lengthy discussion, Jacksonville Beach will remain closed. Jacksonville Beach Mayor Charlie Latham and City Council made that decision last night in response to calls from some to partially reopen the beaches. News for Jacks reporter Ashley Harding joins us now live from Jacksonville Beach. Ashley, Mayor Latham says this is an agreement between the mayors of all three beaches. 
Jen, that is what he's saying. He says all three beach community mayors agree that this simply is the right thing to do. Now, this morning, we have seen quite a few people out and about maintaining that social distancing, but we do know that there are there is patrolling going on to make sure people do stay off the beach. And you can see that one beach access point right here closest to us. There is that yellow tape up along with the cones, and there is a sign there saying letting people know that the beachfront is closed. And last night, Mayor Latham said if the beach is reopened, public health safe and safety could potentially be at risk. With beautiful weather and a peaceful Jack's Beach community, it's easy to understand why anyone would want to see Jacksonville Beaches back open. But last night, Jacksonville Beach leaders put a stop to that notion, citing the coronavirus pandemic. Public safety, once again, is our, our primary responsibility. But if we were to open the beach right now, we would see more people on the beach than have ever been there in our history. According to Mayor Charlie Latham, roughly 10% of those who live in Jack's Beach are over the age of 75. He says keeping the beaches closed is the best move to keep people healthy and fight the virus. Every decision that's been made so far has aligned with the governor and the president, and th those decisions have all been agreed unanimously with myself, Mayors Curry, Brown, and Glasser. And we're going to continue to keep the beach closed until the dangerous pandemic has passed or at least until there's clear scientific evidence that it's safe for our citizens to go back. A debate over beaches is happening in southeast Georgia as well. Yesterday, Michael Browning, the chairman for the Glynn County Board of Commissioners, wrote a letter to Georgia Governor Brian Kemp asking him to reconsider his previous decision to prevent county leaders from enforcing their ordinances concerning COVID-19. In his letter, Browning specifically mentions Kemp's decision to reopen the state's beaches. He said that combined with the executive order's suspension of Glynn County's ability to address short-term rental matters encourages travel into Glynn County from other areas and increases the likelihood that COVID-19 will spread in our community at a greater rate. He went on to say if more people get sick at high rates of speed, it will greatly strain our resources and the capabilities of Glynn County's public safety functions and health care system. Governor Kemp wrote on Twitter saying, quote, most people were complying with the order and patrols were able to address any issues by reminding people to follow social distancing or disperse. We had much lighter traffic at our beaches than normal. And Georgia Governor Kemp also says he's continuing to monitor the developments with COVID-19, the spread of it, and he says he is working with local leaders to stop that spread. Reporting live, Ashley Harding, Channel 4, The Local Station. Despite the ongoing pandemic, Marco Island is reopening its beaches to the public. It's a decision that's met with a lot of controversy, and it's divided city council members. Four in your corners, Rob Manch on Marco, after speaking with the council chairman today about this vote, and he's got details. Rob? Well, this sign behind me is coming down on Monday, and when it does, Marco Island will be the only beach in southwest Florida open to the public. But today, I spoke with Council Chairman Eric Brecknitz, who told me he thinks this might actually help stop the spread of COVID-19. Brecknitz doesn't see a problem with opening the beaches. If they can go out and get fresh air and exercise, you know, in, in somewhat isolation with, with safe social distances. What is wrong with that? Brecknitz says the city's policy right now may actually be doing more harm than good. Social distancing on the beach is easier than the sidewalks, and that's where you're going to push people. The city's new rule will open the beaches from sunup to sundown, but only to pedestrians. The parking lots will remain closed to limit visitors. There's no place for the general public to park. Visitors are not welcome at this point in time. Dean Rock lives in Marco Island. He thinks the council is making the right call. Right. People who are more vulnerable can still take the precautions, whereas those of us who want to move on with their lives and do things and get out should be able to do them. But the council vote was split. Three of the members wanted to keep the beaches shut down. We've never had a pandemic. I think we uh, err to the conservative approach and just close them off. Easy, easily enforced, easily done, and it's a shorter length of pain than prolonging it and then going through this over and over again every other week. Brecknitz says he understands those concerns, but he trusts the city to make sure people are staying safe. We have plenty of staff available 
to do this properly. Mm -hmm. And I have every confidence that the city manager will do that. And I also asked Brecknitz if he was worried that being the only beach open in southwest Florida might draw a lot of visitors. He said with the lack of parking, he's not concerned about it, but he said if it does, they can always close down the beaches again. In Marco Island, Rob Manch, Fox 4, in your corner. Sky 6 flew over Daytona Beach today. Well, that sand, boy, it's beautiful and it looks tempting, right? But it is off limits due to the coronavirus. We're just teasing you with that shot. <laughs> of course, exactly. But county leaders made the decision to close all beaches after the governor announced a stay-at-home order. News 6's Lauren Korn went to Daytona Beach today. She talked with Beach Patrol and a hotel owner about the impact this will have on business. Freedom now marks Daytona Beach, a day after county leaders shut down the 47 miles of coastline by blocking beach access ramps and parking lots. You're taking away our freedom by city, by state, by beach, one beach at a time. Mike Boyce is the man behind the message. I think them closing the beach is only going to make people go to other places where they could possibly group together even more. You know, the beach was that one outlet where people were able to go and that social distance was able to still stay intact. But county leaders disagree and wanted to be consistent with the statewide stay at home order, hoping beach closures will reduce the spread of the coronavirus. We have seen some people on the beach. Um, and those, those people, we're stopping them, we're educating them. Lifeguards are now spending their days driving the beaches, reminding people it's off limits. The only people allowed on the beach, they say, are commercial fishermen, lifeguards, and crews working on seawalls. Those practices where it's a necessity, they're continuing to happen, but uh, any type of leisurely activity, coming to the beach to do anything is, is completely off limits right now. Deputy Chief Aaron Jenkins says their goal is not to issue citations, but rather to educate everyone about the new ordinance. We're empathizing with them in the situation. You kind of have to. These are trying times for a lot of these people. We're doing whatever we can to convince them to leave. And only in the most extreme measure would we actually write a ticket or arrest anybody. Lauren Korn, News 6. New at 6, Volusia County officials are now allowing people to go to the beach, but only for exercise. Here's a live look now at Daytona Beach. It's still pretty empty. All beaches had closed yesterday completely, but county leaders then changed their position today after several spoke up. News 6's Clay Laporte has the latest from Daytona Beach with the help of News 6's Brevard County reporter James Sparvero. You probably saw the latest restrictions when it comes to beaches in Brevard County. Well, you can still go for a walk on Cocoa Beach. You can also do that surfing. The idea is to keep it moving, swimming, fishing. You just cannot, under these new rules, lay out and sunbathe anymore. That didn't sit well with a lot of people here in Volusia County, where the beaches were completely closed. That didn't last very long. Less than 48 hours later, people were back enjoying Volusia beaches after county leaders relaxed the rules, allowing people to exercise on the beach and avoid a $500 fine. The fact that they opened it so quickly is amazing. Uh, you usually walk about two, three miles. We had to convince Don Hipsky to stop and talk to us after he heard the news. I jumped up. I couldn't wait change. I was forgetting my glasses, my my headphones, I just wanted to run out the door. It's incredible. Oh, oh, my heart is singing. What's going on? So are people in Susan Gatowski's building. <laughs> located right on the water. I walk every single day on the beach. And I love this beach with all my heart and soul and might. Public parking will stay closed and social distancing rules remain in effect. But that doesn't bother people like Don Hipsky. People need to get out here, enjoy themselves, you know, follow the rules, and make it safe for everyone, and that's it. From the beaches of Volusia County, Clay Lepard getting results, News 6.
David Ige issued a statewide stay-at-home order. The order allows only essential businesses to remain open and essential activities to be conducted. Now, with nice weather and some good surf, many people left their house today to go to the beach. Here's what Sandy Beach Park looked like earlier this afternoon. Now, beach parks across the state remain closed, and while you can conduct ocean acti activities in the ocean and work out on a beach if you'd like, things like sunbathing can get you in trouble. And as Nikki Shenfeld finds out, some police officers aren't giving out warnings anymore. Some people are still confused about what is and what is not allowed at the beach. People are still coming out to enjoy it, and those that are are having to pay a hefty price. More and more people are now getting cited for hanging out at the beach. On Maui, officers issuing citations to people laying out at Napili Bay. MPD also sharing this photo of officers getting ready to let beachgoers know they have to go. Police statewide said they spent the last week warning people of the new rules. Once your feet touch the sand, you must be exercising, walking or running, or walking towards the ocean for an ocean activity like surfing. What's not allowed is sunbathing, setting up a towel, chair or umbrella, reading a book or sitting on the beach. But this was Lonnie Kai today, and some residents say they are fed up. It's being ignored over here. All of us are staying, you know, the, the most we do is walk or swim or canoe paddle um, or fish, and they're not doing the six feet separation. I think they're, they're, they're being very selfish, and they're putting all of our lives at stake. Kauai Fire Department's Ocean Safety Operations Chief Kalani Vieira is also asking people to do their part to save lives. We encourage you to get your exercise in, keep your distance, but then go home. When in doubt, don't hang out. We all need to do our part by saving lives, especially your own. KPD tells me they issued three citations on Friday to people who were sunbathing and hanging out at the beach. Fines for violating the stay-at-home order are up to $5,000 or one year in jail. Anyone cited for violating the stay-at-home order will also have to appear in court and explain to a judge their reasoning for being out during an emergency proclamation. And as you can see behind me, the waves are big here on the North Shore. Of course, lifeguards still not in their towers, advising everybody to please stay at home. From the North Shore, Nikki Schoenfeld, KHON2 News, working for Hawaii. We make people laugh, we inform them, we educate them, and I think we entertain them just a little. <laughs> Watch Coastal Living, weekday mornings at 9 on KZTV. Well, today, Nueces County and city leaders announced that they are closing all the beaches and all the large parks for the upcoming Easter weekend. Officials fearing that crowds would gather in those areas and spread the coronavirus. Chris X News reporter Seth Kovar was there when the announcement came down. Well, this is where most of us are going to spend our Easter weekend at home. Two of the remaining activities left in this age of coronavirus are now shut down, going to the parks and going to the beach. But city and county leaders both say that it was the right decision to make to keep us safe. Crashing waves, soft sand and sun won't be a part of Easter this year. There's never a wrong time to do the right thing. And I, we think this is right. You could tell they didn't want to, but Mayor Joe McComb and Nueces County Judge Barbara Canales issued orders today, closing all beaches and large parks to vehicle traffic. From the shores of Clayburg, to the shores of Nueces all the way and including Port Aransas. These beach closures are in our best interest for this weekend. In the interest of public safety, despite bans on any gatherings, there are concerns on Easter especially, groups of people could still have formed, allowing the coronavirus to spread. I think as a precautionary for the health and welfare of folks that live out here on North Padre Island, I think it's a good call. That beachgoer is okay with the closures. Not everyone agrees with him. It's the beach is the heart of Corpus Christi, and uh, I don't see no health issues here. Everybody apart. Local leaders hope by putting up barricades blocking the parking lots for beaches and parks, people won't try to use them. Don't mess with the barricades because that's that's messing with county property and, and in direct violation of an order which is punishable not only with the fine, but 180 days in jail. Mayor McComb sees a silver lining in all this. This may be a just a real opportunity for people to uh, focus back on the real meaning of this holiday and other holidays as we approach them uh, throughout the coming year. 
every single town and community in Nueces County will see park closures, and eight large parks that have parking lots in Corpus Christi will also be closed. We have them listed for you on our website, ChrisTV.com. Now, the closures at beaches and parks go into effect at 6 Friday morning, but here's the good news. It all reopens at 6 Monday morning. Reporting in Corpus Christi, Seth Kovar, Chris 6 News.